Let's take a quick poll. If you own a dry suit, raise your hand. Now, if you own more than one set of fins, raise your hand again. And last one, if your instructor told you that when you purchased a dry suit, you needed a new set of fins, maybe because they were heavier and they kept your feet down or they held you in trim, raise your hand as well. Now on that last one, he flat out lied to you. And in today's video, we're gonna show you why. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be addressing a myth that a lot of instructors teach their students about dry suits and what type of fins you must wear with a dry suit. Whether they claim it helps hold you in trim or it just helps pull your feet down so you don't get inverted, we are going to be addressing those situations in the pool tonight and we're going to be using two different dry suits, both a neoprene and a trilaminate dry suit, and we're going to be using four different types of fins. And our goal here is, is to see if we can hold trim while doing skills and to see if we can propel ourselves using two of the most common kick patterns, that of course being the frog kick and the flutter kick, and see if fins really make a difference. Now, what we're not going to be focusing on is how much propulsion we actually have. We're just wanting to see if fins make a difference in holding yourself in trim and if it really prevents you from getting inverted as well. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about fin selection with a dry suit and some things that you should consider. But the last thing I would ever try to do is to tell you there's only one type of fins that you should be diving while diving a dry suit. So with that being said, let's head over to the pool, let's jump in, and let's see if we can control our trim and our buoyancy in a dry suit with multiple types of fins. All right, guys, before we get into today's experiment, we are going to be using four different types of fins. And even though the weight of these fins, in all honesty, is irrelevant to what this video is about, I do want to show you the four fins. And we're actually going to weigh each of these fins just to see what they actually weigh. So the first one that we're going to look at, of course, is the Mares Avanti Quattro. Now, don't worry about brand. All these are going to be Mares's, but I'm going to be comparing them to other fins. And you'll see throughout this video why the weight, in all honesty, is irrelevant. But the Mares Avanti Quattro, which is a very popular fin for both recreational and technical divers, this is going to be pretty consistent with just about any paddle fin out there. So it's going to be pretty consistent as far as how they operate in the water. But if we weigh it real quick, we can see that it's coming in around 2.2 pounds. So you're looking at 4.4 pounds for a pair of them. The next fin that we're going to look at, of course, is the Mares Power Plana. Now, this is a really heavy, solid rubber fin here. It's very bulky. It does give you extra weight on your legs, so it will uh, typically affect your trim if you're having issues controlling your body. However, this is going to be very comparable to, say, the Scuba Pro jet fin or any jet fin out there. Maybe if you got an old set of day cores or something like that. But we're going to go ahead and weigh it as well. It's coming in at three pounds, so you can see with a set of these, you would have an additional six pounds on. The next one that we're going to look at is the Mares Raptor. Okay, the Raptor is a split fin. I know a lot of you guys are like me and you can't really stand split fins. However, it is a very popular fin. We sell quite a few of them. And there's a lot of uh, brands out there that are also selling split fins as well. Scuba Pro's got a set of twin jets as well that a lot of people prefer. So let's go ahead and set those down. And they're coming in right at two pounds. So you can see with a pair of those, you're coming in at four pounds. And then, of course, the last one that we're going to look at are the Mares Extremes. Now, the Mares Extremes are an extremely lightweight fin. They have the OPV or the Optimizing Pivotal Blade. A good comparison to this would be the Scuba Pro or the Scuba Pro Seawing Novas, um, but they are basically just a bladed fin that's got a pivot. They're really designed for uh, flutter kicking only. The, I mean, you can frog kick with these, which you'll see throughout this video. They're just not very efficient as well, but they are lightweight. A lot of people choose these for travel because of how lightweight they are. And it's not even scheduling in at a pound. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, it's not even coming in at a pound. So you can say with a set of these, you're probably not even adding a pound, maybe a pound and a half max. So with that being said, let's go take these fins to the pool. Let's jump in and let's see if they really make a difference while wearing a dry suit. All right, guys. So before we get over to the pool, I do want to discuss one thing real quick. 
anytime that you go diving, you should always manipulate your equipment. You should never let the equipment manipulate you. One of the things that set us dive professionals apart from say your average diver is the fact that we do dive all the time. We practice all the time. We train all the time. We teach all the time. And our skill sets are gonna be a lot higher than what the average divers is gonna be. But we can also make any equipment work for us. So if I take a different mass than what I'm used to, I can simply put it on and go dive. If I change out from a backplate and wing to a jacket style, I can simply put it on and go dive. It doesn't affect me in one way, shape or form. If I decide to change fins, even without any practice, more than likely I can put on a new set of fins and make them work for me. Because I've learned over the years that you don't need a crutch to go scuba diving. A crutch is anything that's going to assist you when you lack the skill or the ability to do something. With a lot of practice, you can do everything that you're gonna see me do in this video without the need for a crutch. Now, should we ever not dive with a crutch? Well, no, if we can use a piece of gear that keeps us safer underwater, it makes our dive more enjoyable and just flat out more fun, then yes, we should be diving whatever equipment that we deem is necessary for us when we're underwater. Not what our instructor says, not what the dive shop that we go to a lot says, we should wear the equipment that makes us feel the most comfortable when we're underwater and what assists us and makes our dive more enjoyable and more fun as well. So with that being said, we're going to jump out here at the pool and I'm going to show you that, you know, you can use any set of fins with a dry suit and dive efficiently and safely. All right, guys, for the first test, I will be wearing a neoprene dry suit and I'm going to be using the Mares Avanti Quattro fins. These are probably my favorite set of fins. I absolutely love these fins. I wear them for just about all the types of diving that I do. Um, but what I'm actually testing here is two things. One, I'm seeing if I can hold trim, which to me, trim is anywhere between zero and 15 degrees. 15 degrees is going to be that optimal angle that you want to be at to maximize the breathing efficiency while underwater but it's also not going to create too much drag. A lot of people think you want to be perfectly at zero degrees and that's not the case. That puts way too much strain on your neck as you try to lean your head up to see where you're going. So that 15 degree angle is where you really want to be at when you're under and that's what you're seeing in this video here. I'm at a 15 degree angle. Now you can also tell I'm not having any difficulty staying horizontal. Um, my feet ain't getting floaty or anything like that so I'm not going inverted and whether I'm kicking frog kick or flutter kick I can even stop mid mid dive and do a simple skill like this so the um, Avanti Quattro's are gonna be a great fin if you dive a dry suit all right, for test number two, I'm still in a neoprene dry suit, and we've bumped up to the Mares Power Plane of Fins. These fins here are a whole lot heavier than most because they are solid rubber, and I actually wear these for a lot of public safety diving and salvage diving just because they are so heavy and they are durable. They, they are basically bulletproof, if you will. Now, please don't go try to shoot it, but they are bulletproof in the sense that it takes a lot to damage these fins. So for any type of hardcore diving like that, that's the choice I'm going to go with. But even though they're heavy you can still see I'm not having any difficulty whatsoever holding that 0 to 15 degree angle in my trim and I'm having zero difficulty propelling myself through the water so they're going to be great as well now we've tested of course the frog kick and the flutter kick here one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I can stop and still do a skill set without those fins becoming either one too heavy or two too light causing an inversion uh, with myself in the dry suit so we're going to stop here we're going to do a quick just mask on and off see if I can hold trim the whole time my feet's not getting too heavy and of course they're definitely not getting too light I'm not getting inverted in any way shape or form and so the power plane is another great choice all right, for test three, once again, same neoprene dry suit. This time I'm wearing the Mares Raptor fins. These are a split fins, and I know a lot of people like me do not like split fins. Um, we actually did a test with these fins. We actually compared quite a few. I'll link that test video down below and up top for you if you want to go check it out. And we actually tested the efficiency of split fins as well. Uh, I was actually shocked. Even though I'm not a huge fan of them, they were very efficient in the water depending on the kick pattern that you use. But as you you can tell here for the purpose of this test I'm having zero difficulty holding trim uh, even though the fins are relatively light I'm not having any difficulty in uh, staying horizontal and not becoming inverted because of it um, as far as ease of kicking here yeah just like the split fins are designed for I'm not having any difficult kicking as well so as far as dry suit use with split fins 
I personally haven't found any problem problems with them whatsoever. I can hold trim. I can be in the middle of the water column here, do a basic skill set. So yeah, split fins are going to be good for dry suit use. All right, test number four. Once again, neoprene dry suit. Now we're using the Marez Extremes. The Marez Extremes is a very, very lightweight fin. Um, they are great for travel because they virtually don't weigh anything. And with the design, with the OPV design, that pivoting blade system they have, they're really only designed, though, for flutter kicking. They're not that efficient when it comes to frog kicking, just because the fins um, don't have a lot of recoil on them, and they don't have the right amount of stiffness. Now, you can frog kick, as you see me do with them, but they are simply designed for flutter kicking. As you can see here, they are very, very efficient with flutter kicking and a great set of fins to use. Now, even though they're really, really light, I'm having zero difficulty whatsoever stay in trim and they're not causing any type of inversion so yes the extremes will work with a neoprene dry suit as well all right guys now we're going to repeat the test again except this time i'm in a tri-laminate dry suit and i'll start out with the avanti quattros again we're going to go through the frog kick the flutter kick and try to hold trim while we do a skill and like i said i'm trying to see if the fins are going to be um the right weight that I need on the be so I don't get inverted. As you can see, doing the frog kick, I've got plenty of power. I've got that perfect 15 degree angle in my trim, so I'm gonna have the best breathing efficiency and not strain my neck to look up. Um, as I switch over to the flutter kick, you can see I still got that perfect angle and I'm able to move through the water column, have zero issues whatsoever with the fins being too heavy and dragging down or being too light and causing an inversion. And of course, I will stop here in just a second and try to do a skill while neutrally buoyant just to show you that these fins are going to work great. Even with a tri-laminate dry suit, I can do a skill without going inverted simply just by being there. All right, for test number six, once again, tri-laminate dry suit, we are back in the Mares Power Plane of Fin. These are those really heavy six-pound fins, or six pounds as a set. They're solid rubber fins. You should never have any issues staying uh, horizontal in, in these fins. You're probably never going to get completely inverted with them. Um, but with them being heavy, a lot of people will feel like they pull your legs down. And as you can see, they're, they're not pulling me down at all. I'm holding that perfect 15-degree angle. Uh, I'm going to have the best breathing breathing efficiency without overstraining my neck there and I can move now even though these fins are not that practical for flutter kicking you can still see I can flutter kick very easily with these fins even wearing a tri-laminate dry suit now we will go ahead and end this test as we did with the others with just a basic skill I'm gonna try to hold trim and do a skill set and see if I can hold it without going inverted a lot of times when we constantly move that obviously helps us from going inverted but if i'm just sitting there trimming out maybe i'm doing a safety stop or something i can very easily remove and replace my mask without going inverted Test number seven, tri-laminate dry suit. And now we've went back to the Mares Raptors, which is a split fin. Um, once again, a lot of people like myself do not like the split fins. We don't think that they're that efficient. But the weight here is going to be spot on with what you need in a dry suit. I'm having absolutely zero difficulty doing the frog kick with it. Um, I'm able to hold that 15 degree perfect angle that we need to be in. And I can move through the water column without going inverted or without my feet actually dropping. So the Raptors are going to be good to dive a dry suit, especially a tri-laminate dry suit like this. Now, as we switch over uh, to the flutter kick, you will notice they are a little bit more efficient as a flutter kick because that's pretty much what they are designed to do. But yet again, I'm staying in that horizontal trimmed out position with absolutely zero difficulty. No chance whatsoever that I'm going to get inverted. Uh, we will go ahead and end this one just like we've done with all the others. We're just going to do a basic skill here, see if we can stay trim without going inverted. And as you can tell, it's a very very, very decent fin to get out there and dive a tri-laminate dry suit with. 
All right, now we're at the final test. Test number eight, trial laminate dry suit. We are back in the Mares Extreme Fins. Once again, these are a very, very lightweight fin. They are great to travel with. Now, a lot of people do become a little afraid to dive these with a dry suit because they are so light and they are afraid that people's going to get inverted or that they will get inverted while diving these. And as you can see, that is simply not the case. Now, even though these fins are not designed specifically for frog kicking, I'm still having zero difficulty uh, moving through the water column frog kicking with these especially even in a tri-laminate suit um, now as i switch over you'll see these are one of the most efficient uh, fins to use for flutter kicking and they're going to work absolutely uh, great with a dry suit or with a tri-laminate dry suit as well and of course we will end this with just a basic skill horizontally trimmed here and we'll see if i can go inverted and doesn't look like I'm going to go invert it. Looks like I'm staying right where I need to be while I do a skill. So are the extremes going to be working good for a tri-laminate dry suit? Absolutely. So as you can see, guys, there's the results. Not only was I able to hold trim and do skills with all four sets of fins and both dry suits, I also didn't have any trouble with the flutter kick or the frog kick regardless what I was wearing. So guys, what's the whole purpose of this video? I want you guys to understand that you need to be able to manipulate your equipment, not let the equipment manipulate you. Once you've mastered a skill set, it really doesn't matter what you wear. When you go to purchase a set of fins, make sure that they fit. If you have a dry suit that has bigger boots and you need a new set of fins because it's got a bigger foot pocket, then buy you a new set of fins. But please don't go out there and buy a new set of fins just because your instructor told you you can only wear one set of fins when you're in a dry suit because that is simply not the case and it's not true neither but guys as always i hope you enjoyed our video if you did give me a big thumbs up definitely share it if you've got a suggestion on a myth or a philosophy that we can test drop me a comment down below and we will try to test it as safely and as quickly as we can but guys as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business